Hubble is all about imagery. It's all about taking clear, sharp, beautiful pictures of the sky and doing fantastic science with, with those images. The story of the Hubble Space Telescope launch is best, uh, the way I like to describe it is uh, climbing to the top of Mount Everest and then suddenly within a couple of months uh, sinking to the bottom of the Dead Sea, the lowest point on Earth. We were having trouble focusing the telescope and uh, we noticed that wide field camera pictures that were coming down were fuzzy, fuzzy blobs instead of nice sharp points. And over the course of early June, we started to get worried. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with the mirror itself. And you can't believe how down every astronomer on the Hubble team was that day because we were about to announce to the world we, we messed up. We don't have the telescope we thought. The conclusion we've come to from that is that there's a significant sp spherical aberration that appears to be present in the optics. And the simplest way of understanding it is that when you have a uh, mirror that's focusing, the light all comes together at a single point is the objective of the exercise. You want the light to come together and focus at a single point. When you have spherical aberration, it says that there's some disfigurement of that mirror that causes the light, instead of focusing at a single point, to be spread across a region in space. And suddenly in the press was born the term Hubble Trouble. I remember giving a talk to some young kids, they were kindergarten kids, really young kids, about the wonders, you know, Hubble. And I said the word Hubble, telescope, and it was like I was Jay Leno. Everybody laughed. So it was a very sad, very difficult time, and some people left the program and went off in disgust. John gave me this one ray of hope. It was that one little ray of hope that I glommed onto. We played with it. We played with the model. And we realized that if the error were in the primary mirror, we could make our correction with a little mirror about the size of a nickel inside our camera. So we purposely made the mirror in our instrument, and therefore our whole camera, out of focus with a minus sign. It was as profoundly out of focus as the Hubble telescope was. Exactly. And that was not easy. We were finishing up the final optical alignment, and the NASA administrator, Dan Golden, visited JPL. We went to the clean room, and he said, what's going on here? Larry Simmons, the project manager, says, well, we're here to fix the Hubble telescope. And his response was, no, you're here to save the agency. That was a clear message to us that it was important. We shall not fail. Shortly after uh, the mission was over, we brought WIFPIC2 online. We'd done everything that we thought we had to do, but there's no substitute for seeing that it actually did work. The first image came and it looked really good. I mean, it looked just the way it should look. <laughs> we did like nine press conferences in a row with primarily WIFPIC pictures. Every single one made front page news across the world. It took this camera being put in the Hubble in 1993 to really start the career of Hubble, to turn Hubble from a national disgrace almost to the great American comeback story. And here it is still our workhorse camera going on 15 years. It's going to be a tough moment when uh, it comes out of the Hubble because I remember exactly the moment it was in place in the Hubble but I really look forward to be able to walk up to it and touch it someday in the Smithsonian and say that's the camera that saved Hubble. <laughs>